architects are going to want to make things pretty and structural engineers make things work. Keep that in mind. Today I am going to teach you guys how to read a floor plan. <laughs> um, it can be really hard to read if you are completely new here, but don't be stressed. I'm here to help you. Floor plans are going to be the heart of any construction document set, also known as CDs, and they have their own beautiful language. Floor plans were formerly called blueprints. The whole set will include every single detail regarding how to build a building. The architect who draws it will explain how to build the building, so will the structural engineer to make sure that the building actually stands. And routinely today, you will submit this CD set off to the state and they will approve you for your permit set. Architects are gonna want to make things pretty and structural engineers make things work. Keep that in mind. And today I'm just going to be providing you a brief introduction on floor plan analysis. I am going to teach you how to read an architectural plan. So the first thing you want to do is look at the scale of the drawing on the CD set. There are various architectural scales that most drafters use and a floor plan is typically drawn as if the roof is lifted off the actual building and you have a bird's eye view on the plan. There's a lot of text, don't get overwhelmed, and there's gonna be varying line weights throughout the floor plan. So the drawing set as a whole that I mentioned in this introduction, it's going to have site plan, building notes, floor plans for each level, an electrical plan, the mechanical systems, and construction details. When I was an intern, I worked on all aspects, excluding the electrical plan and mechanical systems. So let's just start with the basic house plan. Typically in a plan like this, you're, you should have dimensions like that. And let's say that this is 10 feet. And when you signify it, that just means foot. If you knew that, congratulations, just in case you didn't know, because you know, I never know. So what stands out first is probably gonna be these really heavy lines. That means that it's a wall. Walls. Walls are gonna be your most defined component in a floor plan. In a drawing, the poche of a wall is either going to be a completely solid black, it could be a white filled poche with heavy black line. Keep your eye open and on the lookout for the various types of poche. Breaks in the walls are gonna represent doors, windows, or just a simple opening between rooms. And basically the thickness of the wall varies. So interior walls will tend to have a thinner thickness. You can really see this on this plan interior walls, super thin here, but here on the exterior, just because it requires more insulation from the outside and exterior forces that it may face, like weather, that means it's going to be thicker. Any breaks in a wall mean that there's either going to be an opening, a wall opening, or a door. You can easily identify a door because it has its door swing angle here, and they're typically drawn at 90 degrees. Doors and windows are probably most easily identifiable. Window symbols are going to be parallel to the wall. Windows are just breaks in the wall. You just, you know, you punched out a window there. Pocket doors themselves are actually drawn into the wall, and here's an example. And at barn doors, which has recently become very popular due to HGTV, are drawn like this. Now the way I draw my doors, I always include a dashed line and sometimes you can even see the hinges here. There's multiple door sizes, so because this is a front door, this door is probably going to be the largest door. And you can see the various sizes of doors in the door schedule, which is also featured in the CD set. So that means that this swing angle here of the door is essentially going to take up more room. So you can see that this door is much larger than this door because it's a closet door. So the swing angle is gonna be less, and also the actual door size is probably gonna be smaller just because it's for a closet. Now, when you look at windows, windows are drawn with a thinner thickness, and they typically include where the pane of glass is, and that's a very thin line. It will also tend to draw the framing of a window and how it meshes with the exterior wall here. Now, what do you think is going on here? It looks confusing, but don't be stressed. So essentially what's going on here is you're gonna have two for one. You have this back door here, but you can see that the wall ends here. You can tell that it's a wall because of the poche, but here is actually a window and here's the door. And it makes sense because you have your deck here along with some stairs. The stairs are essentially just a series of rectangles and they have arrows. Stairs drawn above a cut line are shown dash. Anything that is represented above a cut line is always gonna be dashed. So above the cut line for stairs, 
arches, any major ceiling changes open to above kind of spaces are going to be drawn with the dash line so you understand how it looks on a floor plan. One thing I want you to know about stairs is that architects are optimists, meaning that the arrow direction of the stairs are always going to be going upwards, positive, upwards, okay? If you're drawing stairs and you're including the direction of the stairs, you never draw it like that, meaning that the, it's going down. Instead, if you're drawing arrows, draw them upwards because architects are optimists. Now, regarding furniture and stuff, typically the placement of the furniture is important too. So all the plumbing work has to be drawn as well, along with the electrical, but they'll always draw the bathroom because that has plumbing along with laundry and kitchen. Very common in a house plan. And yeah, that's your basic house plan. So let's check out other examples. So here we have the Villa Savoy. Now this is more sketch-like. So this is a figure plan. This is a plan plan, but it's not really drawn. But for today's video, I'm gonna show you the actual plans. Here you can see we have the dimensions. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is that all the structural elements, because they're very heavy, they're permanent, are gonna have the fill line. So Le Corbe used pilotis and keep on the lookout I'm gonna have an analysis video on Le Corbe. All of these dots here are actually columns and if you notice it creates a grid. See that? See that grid there? Now this is a wall and you can tell that because the poche is thicker and these dots are just the columns. This is also a wall and it actually has a whole rounded staircase that wraps around like that. Now stairs are typically drawn with a lighter line weight. Line weights are everything with plans. Now another thing I want to point out that's probably most obvious is that this has a pattern and basically that just means the floor itself is tiled. You can see that here in the bathroom it has that tiled pattern but don't get stressed out it just kind of differentiates the room type. This is kind of funky right? The wall comes around wall 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 comes out a little bit and here you can see a door so the doors in this plan are drawn like this you have that arc here and here's the actual door and that's a symbol that you'll see with multiple variations here are Corb's cars so that's not a symbol that you need to know or anything like that but actually the way the Villa Savoy was designed was that this shape this arc shape here matches the turn radius of these cars and that is how the Villa Savoy got this arced shape when you come around here you can still go and bam, park your car in, just like that. So here's level two. And how did you get up there? You got up here through that staircase, which you can see. Floor plans are superimposed above one another. And here we go. We have this ongoing ramp, very common in corpse of work. Upon further investigation, this plan is actually really fuzzy and grainy. And I just don't want to further confuse you guys since this is an introductory video. So I'm actually going to find a CD set. And this CD set I found online by John and Anthony, drafting and design. I'm not taking credit for their construction documents. Typically on the first set, on the drawing sheet, you're gonna see some sort of render on what the house is actually supposed to look like. You're gonna see everything. You're gonna see the scope of work, the area, project data, the site analysis, everything. General notes, that's very common. At my firm, we always just kind of copied it. And then here is the site plan. You're gonna have dimensions of the site, outline of the house, along with these key notes. Now here is the existing plan since it is a renovation. So you're always gonna have an existing plan. Now at my firm, how we always drew existing doors, they were at 45 degrees, but this firm seems to just draw all the doors at 90 degrees. Now let's zoom in. Once again, it's still grainy. So I hope you guys can understand, but I think it'll work. So the poche here, seems to have a nice light gray fill and you can see where the windows are here's a window here because it breaks the wall and you can kind of see where the hinge is i believe that this is drawn in revit so here's your bathroom area once again you're gonna have thinner lines on the interior versus the exterior and any breaks in the wall signifies either a door or a window now if you're curious as to what this is here's the sheet number here and here's what it, the actual plan is so this is the foundation you're gonna have a lot more dimensions here and here typically in feet and these here are call outs they point to specific details or specific notes now in Revit this is a section cut so that means when you're taking a plan and slicing it like a cake to see the layers the section should be on later here but it just signifies what the section number is and this is just the entire plan notated with the dimensions, door counts, type of doors. You have the door schedule up here actually and that's going to have the whole list of doors along with the window schedule. So here we can see we're on sheet A5. This is the dimensional floor plan. So these are all the dimensions meaning that they measured 
from here to here and here to the midpoint in the window to the whole window size, everything, you know, dimensions of the bathroom, the closets, everything. Now here is a roof framing, which I'm not gonna go into. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Here are the building sections. So like I mentioned in the plan, that little section symbol, here it is. And Revit's very cool because they'll actually draw the building section for you. All you have to do is place it in the plan. And here are the elevations. Basically that's if you were to take a exterior photograph of just the north, south, east, or west side and completely flatten it. So it just looks like a plain 2D drawing and that's what you get. That's the result. So here's the garage, front door, windows, etc, etc, what the roof looks like. And here are foundation details. So the foundation here, how it was constructed, what's lying below the foundation. Now let's talk about poche. So I mentioned this when reading walls, but basically when you're reading a wall, it's going to be filled in. So when we were looking at this house plan here earlier, we said that this interior wall is going to be thinner than this, meaning that there's more poche here than here. If you look at churches, churches are a great example of thick poche. You have various thicknesses in the actual poche, so that's why this is so interesting. Now here's a section cut, and the section will always coordinate to the plan. So this is a basic cross plan. Picture that that's that plan. It looks like the section cut goes right here, so it kind of goes up, dips up a little bit like that, comes down. And ideally, you would have multiple section cuts, so you kind of get like this wire-framed view of the plan, right? Like you're almost drawing a box, and then you take a section cut here. That right there would be your section, and it always coordinates with this base plan. Here, you can see in the center of this axis, there's a dome, a lot of space, clear story lighting. It looks like there's a bunch of glass up here, more clear story lighting, very common in churches. But essentially this is a vaulted space right here. What's interesting is that all the poche here in the wall supports that dome, redirects the weight of the dome to the foundation. Here is probably where the altar is. And here you can see there's a little carving here. So the poche alone can tell a lot about a structure in a building. Here you can see that there's actually no door symbol. This just signifies that there's a change in the floor. So it's probably stepped up. Even might be stairs, but there's no arrows here, so I don't want to assume. I try and find another plan or an interior photograph to before I assume that there's stairs, but they probably are stairs. And the reason I'll tell you this is that if it was stairs, ideally you would draw like that. If it was an overhead arch, you would dash it like that because it's above the cut line. Only when you practice reading an architectural drawing will you start to feel more comfortable doing it. Better understand how to actually effectively read a floor plan and grow as an architect. Very quickly, the longer you do this, you are going to be able to experience buildings in a new light. This is just a very basic overview. I didn't go into how to read framing, electrical, plumbing, etc. This is more just an overview. Please subscribe, consider supporting me on Patreon it means the world to me and I hope to see you in the next video. Love you guys.